Welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. Think Tech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com, as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube pages. And viewers like you have the opportunity to ask us questions by sending them to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. On the show today, we have my friend, Tyler Dos Santos Tam. He is a chairperson for the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Tyler. Hey, Kathleen, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, as many of us may know here in Hawaii, the Democrats and the Democratic Party have been the majority party since 1962. So it's great to have you on the show for us to talk about like what that means for Hawaii. But before we delve into all of that, tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. Well, uh, I'm Tyler Dos Santos Tam, born and raised uh, in the Lehigh and Aleva Heights and now a resident of Kaka'ako. I was elected chair of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in uh, last summer, 2020. Um, prior to that, I was the executive director of the Hawaii Construction Alliance, which represents five of the construction trade unions. Um, I'm also the honorary consul of Portugal here in Hawaii. And the, uh, I was formerly the chair of the Neighborhood Commission Office, which uh, oversees uh, the neighborhood board system. That's a lot of leadership positions you have there, friend. And it, it's definitely an honor to, to have you on the show. So let's delve into one of those positions. As chair of the Democrat Party of Hawaii, um, what has the party been up to? Well, you, know, you make a really good point that we've been the majority party basically since statehood. And you know, a lot of the things that we enjoy today um, were enshrined in our constitution in 1978 and subsequently you know, have been built upon um, by years of democratic leadership here. From the party side, we have about 80,000 members statewide and they, um, you know, many of them are active in their communities, active in uh, advocacy and lobbying, um, as well as within the party's various committees. We have a, you know, membership committee, community relations. We have events um, on an ongoing basis, including switching now to Zoom events uh, over the past year. But really at the core of this, this is about a movement of people coming together to make Hawaii a better place, somewhere that's more fair, more just, to make sure that people have access uh, in an equitable way to resources and are able to you know, live their best life here in Hawaii. How has that gone for you? I know um, your position entails you talking to the different um, folks in the, the different states. So with um, everything that went on in 2020, how did you handle that? Yeah, well, of course, 2020 was a huge election year, not only for the presidency, but Senate races and House races. Um, here in Hawaii, we're very proud to have uh, hundreds, if, if not over a thousand, you know, shifts of people calling texting uh, into these swing states to make a difference. And then of course, with the Senate race in Georgia going to a runoff, um, we got uh, more of our volunteers engaged in that race because really control of the Senate came down to that. I was very proud of um, being able to send 25,000 handwritten postcards from Hawaii to voters in Georgia, urge them to elect uh, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff um, to the Senate. The margin of victory for those two candidates was about 10,000 voters. So our 25,000 postcards, I'd like to think, made a difference. That's, so that's a, a grassroots operation that um, was nationwide. How did you even come about and, or how did the party think about doing that? Postcards is a very simple concept, and yet it, as we saw, it had a very powerful impact. Well, just like everything else, you know, the pandemic changed the way we we're doing things. In some ways, it forced us to do um, more modern things like, of course, get on Zoom, but in other ways, it kind of forced us to go back to really traditional things like sitting at home and writing postcards. And of course, if you're staying safe at home um, during the pandemic, what better way than, you know, writing postcards and um, having cute little messages to people in Georgia um, to take voting seriously and to, you know, make a good choice. I love that. That's, that's absolutely wonderful. I, I'm always a um, supporter of grassroots movements because um, I think community always starts in you know our closest circles. Um, but on the much larger scale, we currently have an administration who has a Democrat 
um, in the presidency, which is uh, President Joe Biden. So can you tell us a bit um, or give us an update of how the Democratic Party of Hawaii and the current administration are tied in and what's going on there? Sure. Well, we are about five months into the Biden administration um, as of today. And in that time, I mean, they've really done a great job of hitting ground running. You know, they inherited a lot of difficult challenges uh, due to the pandemic, the economy. And um, since then, you know, they passed the third stimulus, the American Rescue Plan, which gave people, including about 900,000 people in Hawaii, um, stimulus checks, about uh, $1,400. In addition to that, you know, there are a lot of other uh, programs to help small businesses, to help uh, families, um, to help pay for child care, uh, extending the child tax credit. And you know, we are plugged in um, on a regular basis with the DNC nationally as well as the White House. And every time that they you know, do something positive for Hawaii, we try to amplify that message. Uh, just last week, they announced $6 million for uh, Haleakala National Park to expand that park to make sure that we're protecting um, you know, special places on Maui. Prior to that, um, at the start of this month, um, they announced a uh, plan to invest in res resilient infrastructure. And of course, we're at the beginning of hurricane season. And so those are just two examples of just little things the Biden administration has been doing that are going to make a big impact here in Hawaii. Um, and in a way that you know is, is different than the, the nationwide benefits of stimulus package or the nationwide benefits of a you know, comprehensive uh, infrastructure bill or what have you. Let's talk about um, the current administration's response to COVID-19 and how that has trickled down to our state of Hawaii. Um, can you expand more on that, Tyler? Sure, well, if you think back just five months ago to January, um, you know, there are very, you know, at that point, uh, only medical professionals were getting the vaccine. And since then, we've gotten, thanks to the, you know, volunteering of so many people in Hawaii to go and get a vaccine. You know, we're, we're getting back to normal. The Biden administration has ramped up production of vaccines. Um, they've made it easier to get it. And the president, of course, set the goal of May 1st as a date when any American over uh, the age of 16 at that time. Um, to be able to get it, and Hawaii exceeded that. But you know, there's a lot of small businesses and um, you know individuals who have been hurting. Um, so you know, the administration made sure that uh, people got stimulus checks, made sure that people who have um, you know children would get that child tax credit, um, and then they've also you know made sure that you know businesses could keep accessing uh, loan programs and other things to keep their employees you know on the payroll make sure that they could take care of their families. That is wonderful. I know you mentioned this um, earlier, but can you expand more on, and I think I'll always tie the questions back to, how is it pertinent to us here in Hawaii? So the, the two plans you mentioned were the American Families Plan and American Jobs Plan. Um, could you talk a little bit more about those two plans? Sure, well, um, starting with the American Families Plan, uh, this is really focused as, as the title says, on families. What that means is early childhood education. President Biden wants to make sure that every uh, child in America, every young in America has access to quality preschool education. And also that uh, educators who are preschool teachers, who you know, are supervisors in preschools, who, who have other you know, jobs in early childhood education are being paid a fair wage starting at $15. You know, nationwide, the minimum wage is much lower than that. But if you are, you know, in early childhood education, you want to make sure that they're taken care of. And so that's part of his plan. In addition to uh, that, he wants to expand the uh, child tax credit to make sure that people, um, parents uh, or other caregivers can take care of their children, make sure that they have nutrition, make sure that, you know, they can pay for child care. Now, moving forward to Older kids, um, part of that plan is uh, free college education, free community college for two years, expanding Pell Grants for those uh, students who want to go to a four-year institution. Um, and here in Hawaii specifically, one of the things that the Biden administration is doing is committing $39 billion to minority education, higher education. So that includes uh, historically black colleges and universities around the country, 
but also includes institutions with high numbers of Asian American and Pacific Islander students. So here in Hawaii, that's basically every campus here, and they're going to be able to apply as part of this $39 billion investment to make sure that um, young Asian American Pacific Islanders um, you know, are able to complete college, have the resources, um, and have programs that are going to support them. And then, of course, we can't forget about our seniors. And so, um, you know, many families, including our viewers out there, myself included, uh, take care of older relatives. And so, you know, that sometimes takes them away from work, that takes them away from other, you know, responsibilities that they have. So part of this plan also is going to be making sure that caregivers um, get taken care of, that they have adequate resources um, to make sure that, you know, they're helping our seniors age in place in a healthy way. And so it's um, from the very youngest to the very oldest, we want to make sure that nobody slips through the cracks. That's great. Um, the tuition subsidies that you talk about, when does that, or how can someone, of, I know you mentioned that was um, like folks of uh, Pacific Islander or Native Hawaiian descent could take advantage of that. Like how, how would they go about that? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of these funds are going to be up to uh, those colleges and universities to apply for, um, they, you know, they, a lot of them get grants from the Department of Education, but specifically for local families, you know, I know a lot of them um, are part of the Pell Grant program. Um, many of our viewers probably got Pell Grants as a part of paying for their college or university education. And so President Biden wants to increase that to $1,400, wants to make sure that you know, dreamers, uh, you know, immigrants who came to this country as kids um, can access that. Um, he also wants to make sure that, uh, you know, part of the issue as to why a lot of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, other Pacific Islander fam, you know, students um, don't continue their education all the way to the end and don't graduate is the cost burden. And so um, to the extent that we can have tuition subsidies, these grants, make sure that that cost burden is taken off the table that they can study. Um, that's really important because if they graduate with a degree, they have much higher income potential for the rest of their lives. And, um, you know, that's good for our economy overall. I think that's great. Um, I know we had uh, talked about what the administration is up to. Let's, we have a few minutes before we go on our midway break, but can you tell us about what the Democratic Party of Hawaii is up to these days? Just like a, like sure. a preview, I guess, before we yeah. delve into it on the second half. Well, you know, we are in, um, in off season. Uh, you know, our elections, of course, 2020 and 2022, and right now we're smack in the middle of that. And so there's, there aren't that many opportunities for people to get involved with campaigns, but I will say that a lot of local campaigns are ramping up and so, you know, all the candidates statewide are, are thinking about next year and volunteers are as well. Um, but one really key thing that maybe we could revisit is nationally, um, over in Virginia, they have really critical elections this November, uh, November of 2021 for governor and in the state assembly. And of course, Virginia is a, a swing state. And so we're gonna be helping from Hawaii, just like we did in Georgia with postcards, phone calls, et cetera, um, to make sure that we support not only the gubernatorial candidate in Virginia, but the down ticket candidates as well. Because what happens in a big state, a very populated state like Virginia, you know, could expand nationwide. And so we want to make sure that that uh, blue wave of Democrat uh, Democratic victories from 2020 continues in 2021, in Virginia. Wonderful. So uh, as I mentioned, we are going to go on break, but when we return, we'll delve more into what the Democratic Party of Hawaii is up to, as well as challenges of being the majority party. So stay tuned. America Finding Its Way is a 30-minute talk show from Think Tech Hawaii, which is streamed live at 11 o'clock every Thursday morning. The show features Jay Fidel as host with regular contributors Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, Stephanie Dalton and Winston Welch. We discuss the issues, events, challenges and crises in Washington and around the country and the world, in the federal and state governments, in the cities and in the hinterland. We examine and evaluate the motivations and frustrations of the competing individuals and interests these days. We connect the dots, we tell the truth, and we try to figure out what it all means and where things are going. In short, we cover America finding its way in the post-Trump world, 
which is not easy and which is sometimes a discouraging experience. We try to be optimistic but we are often left pessimistic about the future of our country. Come watch us. Listen to us. Email your questions to us at questions at thinktechhawaii.com every Thursday morning, and you'll see what we mean. Thanks. Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and our guest this afternoon is Tyler Dos Santos Camp, the chairperson for the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Right before we left, we were talking about what the party has been up to. Um, and Tyler, you mentioned that while we were talking about what the administration was doing, well, it's all connected anyway. Um, but you mentioned infrastructure as well. So let's 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 delve into that. Yeah, I was so excited to talk about, you know, President Biden's American Families Plan. Didn't get to the jobs. American Jobs Plan is being discussed right now in Congress, and it's the subject of a lot of negotiations. But the bottom line is we've talked about comprehensive infrastructure plan for our country for years. And we're finally at a point where we realize we need it. Um, and so this infrastructure plan is uh, really going to help us here in Hawaii. We have, uh, you know, especially on the neighbor islands, bridges that are deficient. We have, as anyone that's driven on our roads, um, on H1, H2, H3, uh, knows we got potholes. Um, and then in a bigger way, you know, a lot of our infrastructure here in Hawaii, whether it's our airports, whether it's our power plants, they're all right along the shoreline. And so in an age where we have sea level rise, climate change, um, we need to do things to protect that infrastructure and make it more resilient. And so President Biden's infrastructure plan is really going to be focused on um, making sure that our infrastructure is uh, ready for the 21st century, ready for climate change, and you know won't have the same failings that you know our, our crumbling infrastructure from the 20th century um, had as well. I love how you um, you, you talk about that because um, people always think. Well, I don't want to overgeneralize, right? But a lot of times people think that infrastructure is a like a local city and county issue. So it's good to know that we can tie that in with how the current administration can help us out with that. Um, right. You did talk about the families plan and the jobs plan, the American jobs plan, and we have a question from a viewer. So let me go ahead and read that to you, Tyler. Are there any new plans from Biden to solve all the empty job occupations? Right, and this is, uh, there's a couple layers to this question. I think one is immediately, you know, from the pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs. We still haven't been able to get all of those folks back into their current job. Um, and so, you know, making sure that people had that stimulus earlier this year to kind of get through and be able to carefully budget was one really important step. But the next thing is making sure that whatever next job that they uh, get into, it's going to be one that pays bills. You know, here in Hawaii, we have so many people who have two jobs, three jobs. And part of President Biden's plan, not only to raise the minimum wage, um, but to make sure that, you know, jobs around the country pay a decent wage and have decent benefits. That's something that's really key and that's gonna be part of his plan. When we talk about the infrastructure plan, um, you know, those construction workers that are gonna be building clean energy infrastructure around the country, he wants to make sure that they also have, you know, good benefits and a good wage scale. And then, you know, all of these other things are uh, dependent as well on changing technology. And so, you know, folks, from around the country, you know, from industries that are maybe on the wane, on the way, uh, you know, being becoming obsolete, want to make sure that those people have access to job retraining programs. And that's also part of his plan to make sure that people can go back to college if they want to, that they can finish their college degree and have higher earning potential. So it's not going to be something that happens overnight, but all of these pieces together are going to help um, to make sure that Americans in the country and here in Hawaii can get um, back to work and, you know, get in a job that keeps them ahead, keeps them and their family. Okay, and we have a second viewer question. So let's go ahead and ask, ask us because we do prompt our viewers to ask us questions. Will Biden meeting Putin affect Hawaii? What we saw in the star advertiser, I think it was today or yesterday, you know, we had planes scrambled from Hickam Air Force Base in response to Russian, you know, Russian military exercise near us. I think one really key thing um, that's going to be a hallmark of the Biden administration is returning to the world stage, re-engaging with our allies, 
who is just in Europe with the leaders of the G7 and NATO. And so I think that it's going to help Hawaii in that we have allies working together. Um, at that summit, uh, they talked about the challenges that China is going to pose. And of course, here in Hawaii, we might be the closest state um, to China. And China, of course, is expanding into the South China Sea and into the South Pacific. And so having uh, good relationships with our allies like Japan, the Philippines, India, Indonesia, you know, Australia, um, and, and President Biden's longstanding relationships with uh, people in those countries, leaders, diplomats, um, will, will help to make sure Hawaii um, stays safe. And of course, um, we have a great uh, military presence here. Um, all six branches in the military are here in Hawaii, including the new Space Force, um, you know, tracking satellites. Uh, you know, President Biden's also very cognizant of that and uh, will be continuing what President Obama started with a pivot to the Pacific. And so it wouldn't surprise me if Hawaii plays a bigger role uh, diplomatically and militarily in the next few years. That's something we will definitely watch out for. Um, and I know, like I've known you for a while and you've always been very passionate about your involvement with the community and especially now with the Democratic Party and your, your other things as well. Um, what are the challenges you think that the Democratic Party faces as the majority party? Well, being the dominant party uh, here in the state, and of course, you know, the state Senate being 24 to one, um, and the state house being 47 to four, you know, I think all of the uh, natural tensions that exist within the big tent of the Democratic Party become much more magnified um, when it's so dominant here. And so, you know, we have people who are very passionate about environmental issues, very passionate about labor issues, very passionate about women's issues, healthcare, you name it. Um, you know, all of these things kind of come into play and my role as chair and along with the county chairs and, um, you know, other folks in leadership within the Democratic Party, really it's our job to make sure that all of those voices are heard and that they all work together. Really in my mind, those things don't have to be in opposition. Um, and, and going back to the Biden administration, when we talk about his infrastructure plan or jobs plan, it's really about preparing for climate change, mitigating climate change, reducing carbon, and also making sure that those people who are working on in energy plants, you know, construction workers, utility workers, that they have good paying jobs. You know, we can work to try to do the most good for the most people. And I think that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. And so it's not just um, balancing competing interests one against another, but it's how they can work together within our big Ten. Right, well, as the chair of the majority party in Hawaii, what is one lesson that you have learned in your position so far that you would like to share with um, our community or the viewers out there? You know, that is a, a great question. And I think that the one lesson um, that that I would share is individuals can make a difference. And um, it's just a matter of, you know, finding the right people to talk to, um, coming up with a compelling argument, and just having that degree of follow through to make things happen. I'll give you a, a good example. Today, um, the Governor Ige signed a bill to recognize Juneteenth, which is the day that um, slaves were emancipated in Texas, and it's become a um, nationwide celebration, right? especially for the African-American community. And here in Hawaii, we don't, we didn't have legislation recognizing that day. Uh, the Miss Hawaii uh, for this year, uh, this is her signature issue. And she approached the party and said, hey, you know, would you guys be willing to sign on to a letter for the upcoming legislative session? Of course, you know, we did. But if she hadn't done that, you know, we wouldn't have um, become involved. And it was something as simple as that, a simple email to um, me as chair, or you know someone else. Similarly, you know there are a lot of other issues that are being worked on right now. We have our um, health committee, which has been discussing uh, ways to improve access to healthcare. Um, there's a lot of ways for people to plug in, and I think if you're passionate about an issue, um, come join you know our Democratic Party if that aligns with your values. We'll find a way to use your talents, skill, um, energy, and you know try to put it to work in a good way to make a difference. And on that note, is there anything else that you would like to add that we haven't covered? 
Well, one thing that I'm really excited to announce, um, yesterday our executive committee approved the creation of a small business working group. And I think for your viewers out there, they're gonna be really interested in this um, because you know, as we recover from the pandemic, um, we as a Democratic Party wanna make sure that we're supporting our small businesses. And this is an initiative that as chair, you know, I'm really excited about. We're gonna be going out there and doing a listening tour, engaging with small businesses to hear from them you know, we've talked about raising the minimum wage, we want to make sure that we take all of their uh, input into consideration, making sure that, you know, if there are other uh, issues that businesses face in, in succeeding and getting started and navigating some of the regulation here that, you know, we're responsive to their needs. And so, you know, over the next few months, we're going to be going out there throughout the state and listening to um, businesses that are owned, not just by members of the party, but also, you know, um, really institutions in the community to see what their needs are, and to see what we can do to support those small businesses in our community. Wonderful. And if people would like to get a hold of you or the Democratic Party of Hawaii, how do they go about in doing that? Sure. Um, well, my email is tyler at hawaiidemocrats.org. You can visit our website. Um, I try really hard to respond to all the emails that come my way. So I would love to hear from your viewers and get their input. Um, it's really easy to join our party as a member right from our website. And of course, if you've moved over the past uh, few years and need to update your information with us, um, you can do that online as well. So we want to be a party for the 21st century. So um, you can find us online, engage with us there. I look forward to hearing from the viewers um, to make sure that we're moving Hawaii forward in the best way that we can. Thank you so much, Tyler, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we also want to thank Jay Fidel and the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii for making programs like this possible. And on that note, we will see you um, next time. Aloha. Aloha.